Hi, I'm here with Jason Horalak and Joanna Harnett. How are you both? Yeah, very well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for being here. But most importantly, thank you for the microbiome chapter. I know when we initially spoke about it, uh, look, the microbiome was a much smaller topic, shall we say? <laughs> I mean, research is growing in that area in such a big way. Um, but how did naturopathy find both of you to start? Do you want to go first, Jen? I don't know. Uh, well, naturopathy found me, um, like I think it finds many people um, who, uh, who follow this journey with the personal health struggles that I've had for many years. And I met a, um, a very fascinating doctor who was also trained in naturopathy and she provided some really simple down-to-earth basic care and um, identified a couple of nutritional deficiencies that literally changed my life in terms of my health and well-being. Um, and so I ch completely changed my course of study um, at that time. I went, that's what I want to do. That's what I'm passionate about. So that's how naturopathy found me, found me in, my, in my own health. Okay. And how about you, Jason? How did you connect to it? Yeah, I mean, I think mine was a bit of a health journey too. But um, for me, it was... I was a backpacker leaving, leaving Canada. I came to Australia and I arrived in, in Byron Bay back in the early 90s. And it was a pretty um, amazing transformative place back then. And, you know, I grew up eating tons of junk food. And when I arrived in Byron Bay, I, I was, you know, smoked and I drank and I didn't take care of myself at all. So, um, but within a period of time, finding, chatting, meeting some new people and, and essentially finding some books on, on naturopathy, even though they weren't called by that name, and transforming my diet and starting doing fasting and meditation and exercise, my health complaints were completely transformed. And for me, it was, it was essentially asthma and allergic rhinitis I'd had my entire life. And they were essentially gone a few months after starting sort of my, my naturopathic journey. But at that time, I didn't know you could actually do this as a profession. Um, I just thought it was a way of, way of life. And only later on did I find that you could study it and help other people to do it to do the same things which i thought was absolutely amazing so i jumped at the chance once i found that you could do that <laughs> and how did you both get connected to the microbiome world like how did you sort of move from where you started and, and specialize in the specific world? yeah i mean for me it was interesting because my because my health issues were were lung related that was certainly my my passion and drive all through the, the initial three and a half years of my, my naturopathy training, it was only probably towards the very end that, that there was some special, special lectures around the topics of dysbiosis and intestinal permeability. This was back in 1999. And um, Dr. Stephen Myers actually brought all the sort of um, content that was around back then. And, and I was just so inspired and excited by, by the concepts that were being discussed around dysbiosis and, and leaky gut, essentially. And, and, and the, the wide range of conditions that were being impacted by those conditions, even back then, that I approached them immediately afterwards and said, hey, I, you know, I'm about to finish my fourth year. I'd love to do my honors research degree looking at, at this and hopefully PhD from that point onwards. So then in late 99, early 2000s, I had that chance to really delve into the area and spend years <laughs> reading, <laughs> reading and reading and designing research studies and such. So it was, it was pretty amazing. Um, timing of that because I was there at that that time where it was just beginning to build from you know a handful of researchers around the world to to obviously where it's that now where it's, it's a phenomenal amount of research going into the import of a, of a range of microbiomes in the human body. Mm. And how about you Joanna? How did you sort of connect to the microbiome world? Um, I was working in an integrated medical center in Sydney's um, north um, with a fantastic GP at the time, and I was doing her um, naturopathic arm of the practice. And we were seeing people with chronic complex conditions. Um, and this, would, this was in the early 90s and throughout the, the 90s that we were doing this, uh, this work, which was kind of just the start of people making an association between the gut and extraintestinal um, illness. Um, she was very much a very pioneering GP and was starting to do the very first stool tests that were done at that time. Um, and a pattern started to emerge um, uh, between, you know, particular patterns and particular illnesses um, or patterns in the gut um, microbiotic composition. And this was really rudimentary testing in, that, in those days. Um, 
But at that time, I only had a, a diploma in naturopathy because degrees actually hadn't been available um, until the um, later in the 90s. Um, so I started studying part time um, and asked the course coordinator of, if I could actually undertake um, a, an additional unit in microbiology because I was quite fascinated. And then I got addicted to learning. I went on and did my master's, which was looking at the gut microbiome and celiac disease um, because I was seeing a lot of relationship between gut dysbiosis and either celiac disease or gluten intolerance, which then led me to doing my PhD because I still had more questions at the end of my master's about the association between the gut microbiome and celiac um, disease. So that finished in 2013. Now I continue to study through my students who are engaged, my own PhD students who are engaged in um, exploring the association between the gut microbiome and chronic disorders. In fact, Jason and I are um, co-supervising a, a student at the moment who's exploring the relationship between fibromyalgia and um, dysbiosis. Fascinating. And, and where do you both see the microbiome world heading? I mean, what a massive question I know. But what do you what do you think we're going to learn? I think we'll just get greater clarity of its import. You know, and, and I think the you know back when I started my, my, my honors PhD journey, there was some people who started talking about the ecosystem being like a, set, a human organ that we had to really pay attention. It's doing lots of amazing functional roles for us, just like the liver or another human organ, and it's essential for life. And that, that was a big leap then. And I think the biggest leap that we'll see in the next few years is, is that. And I should say that that is much more accepted now. You know, back then it was like, well, a lot of people were pretty resistant to that idea. Um, and, and now it's the leap that we are actually are a holobiont, that we are composed of microbes and non-microbes that make us what we are and we may well be you know between 50 and 90 percent microbes and the rest non-microbes but that is what we are our, our, it's just this conglomeration of human and well what, what yeah human cells and microbe cells and i think it's that leap and i think the we now have the tools to see the nuanced impacts that that different ecosystems actually have um, on on our overall functionality and i think that will just get we'll get more and more detail of that as, as each year progresses. Mm -hmm. And Joanna, do you want to add anything to that? Um, that way you see naturopaths moving with respect to the microbiome and its knowledge? Um, I think naturopathy will find its place um, in the microbiome, so to speak. Um, you know, after looking in this relatively short period of time at this topic, um, I'm never, it never ceased to amaze me how the simple things that naturopathy prescribes, including diets that are rich in plants and plant-based um, foods, is probably the single most um, powerful factor in helping to restore and maintain uh, the balance of the gut microbiome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can do these complex and amazing sciences and understand more about it. But if you keep looking at the conclusions in all these papers, they will talk about the importance of diet and, and maintaining a healthy microbiome. And that's where I see naturopathy uh, plays a, a, a fantastic role um, in maintaining that ecosystem. Yeah, I, I, I agree, Joanna. It's amazing that, um, you know, us as naturopaths have got that lifestyle medicine aspect of, you know, exercise, optimal lifestyle and optimal, optimal diet. And we now know that those things are so linked in with healthy microbiomes and it's something that naturopaths have always done, <laughs> essentially yeah. is, is inadvertently, <laughs> you know, it was a bit, we weren't necessarily aiming that, but that was the end result was, was optimizing people's microbiomes. Absolutely, and, and thereby limiting the use of um, pharmaceutical medicines that are, you know, we're now seeing a growing list beyond antibiotics and um, proton pump inhibitors that are playing a role in altering that microbiome. Um, you can see many of the things that we're able to help people with may uh, reduce the need for those things that have a really significant impact on some people. Yeah. Mm. Well, thank you both for both your time today, but certainly for the chapter and um, really looking forward to seeing how it influences and educates um, the clinicians and um, your contributions been really appreciated. So thank you both so much. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you.